Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica, and welcome to the Fan Carpet. If we go back to the beginning, was there a defining moment for you to get into the film industry? Well, I'll let Laura answer this one, actually, because I went last time, so we're, here we go. All right. Um, like, the kind of, yeah, um, when I was 13, I, like, I always wanted to be an actor. When I was 13, I um, went to a school in London called the Cele uh, Celebrity Talent Academy. And then from there, when I was 16, I got scouted. I went out to um, LA and did a big competition out there. Um, and that was just kind of the moment where I was like, oh my God, maybe I could actually do this kind of thing. And it's just been going from there, really. Thank you, John. Um, for me, it was, well, Sam, I always wanted to be an actor, obviously, as a, a, young, a youngster. Um, did a lot of drama and stuff when I was at school and then for me my life kind of went the opposite way because I joined the army which is where I was for seven years um, got out of there became a tattoo artist and then obviously I went to Lambda uh, which is a school in London and I did my, my acting and directing courses there so for me I didn't get in until it was about 2009 um, but even then I was, I was more behind the camera so it was obviously consulting roles cool Okay, so, <clears throat> uh, so uh, like uh, we're talking about wrongfully accused today. So, um, what was it that first got you, made you to get involved in wrongfully accused? And was there any research that you had to do uh, to bring the story to the screen? Yeah, um, I mean, it, it's mainly based on a friend of mine that went to prison uh, for five years. So, this this story is actually kind of based on him. Um, the only difference is the inmates and stuff that he actually met is a lot different. I've interviewed quite a few from Belmarsh Prison, Northumberland, Durham, various different ones um, to get their stories, compile them together and obviously find out what obviously the, the actual facts are from obviously the made up kind of stories. Um, but for me, seeing dramas on TV and obviously it, it's, it's great, but a lot of it's fabricated and, and stuff like that. So for me, I wanted to make something that was true, full, hard hitting and do it as that, that crime drama. Great, and for you, Laura? Um, I saw, saw the casting for Wrongfully Convicted on Facebook, and I was just like, I love all the kind of crime series and things like that, and I was like, I gotta apply for this. Um, and I did, and luckily I got it, so I was like, quite, quite chuffed with that. And um, yeah, I mean, I've been talking to John about it and everything, and I'm, getting very, very excited about it. So waiting to get on set once uh, once we're able to. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, think it's all, all been a little bit, because um, like, as a producer, you, you kind of have, like for, from, um, like for me, because I'm doing the budget for our short film at the moment, uh, you, you've got your budget for the film, but then all the safety measures that are on top of that. So how is how much is that going to balloon, um, balloon the budget? So, you know. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, not massively on this this side of it. Um, it's it's like masks, hand sanitizer, pretty much any non kind of personnel that aren't, isn't really needed on set is obviously offset. Um, so the actors themselves, obviously, when they're on, they wear masks. As soon as the camera's on, it's off, and, and they're acting. Um, so yeah, it, it's not too bad. It's just a bit more restrainful rather than obviously what we were hoping originally. Um, so obviously it was meant to start in April, which again we wouldn't have had any of these restraints because there, there was none in place. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think it's obviously it'll make an impact, but not not a great deal. We're hoping. Okay, cool. Uh, is that something that you have to take into consideration with your production company as well, Laura? Oh yeah, like there's so much that you got to think about at the moment, um, and it's it's just about keeping everybody safe like it's all good and well making some good films and good shows and everything but if everyone's not safe there's no point in doing it so you know it, it's a lot a lot of um like the government websites going through and looking at all the, the different policies and what what you've got to put in place so it is important i mean you know like i say you know safety is the first the first priority there absolutely absolutely um, so, um, what is your preferred genre and do you have any favourite films? I'll let John take this one first. Are you going to? 
Uh, for me, it, it's got to be action, horror. I mean, I am varied, to be honest with you, but action, horror, comedy is kind of where I swear a lot, a lot of my time to. Um, I love anything by pretty much Steven Spielberg, but then at the same time, I love anything by Stephen King. Um, so I am really varied when it comes to obviously, the genre style. Um, Hi. I'm sure Laura's uh, completely opposite that. <laughs> no, I, I, I like a bit of everything. Um, I do like chick flicks, I've got to admit. But um, no, I love action movies. I like. I will always go to an action movie, like, you know, or comedies. Comedies are good. Um, I think, like, I mean, it sums it up that Need for Speed is my favourite movie. So, you know, that, that kind of sums it up. So... Right, cool. Yeah, well, this is a good film. I like it, especially when uh, when you consider that all of those stunts they actually did, and it's, there's no no CGI involved at all. Um, yeah, it looks amazing, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's just great. Yeah, uh, good, um, yeah as I suppose it kind of helps that um, it's, it's Scott Wire, isn't it, who directed it? Because because no the director is a stunt guy. As, like was a stunt guy before he moved into directing. Oh, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah. So it always helps for the authenticity. Um, mm. So are there any other aspects of the film industry that you'd like to pursue? He's getting fast. Oh, well, I may as well. Um, for me, probably more serious acting roles. Like I said, I've done small speaking roles. I've done extra stuff. I've been in front and behind the camera since well, since I could walk, basically. Um, so I've, I've done, a, done a fair bit, um, but for me, definitely more the, the serious acting side of things. Um, like I said, just get some big productions behind me and stuff like that. So, yep, yeah, that's me, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, I don't, like, I'm, I'm kind of similar to John, like, I've always done, like, a bit of everything. Um, like I've mentioned it before, but I want to do the stunt stuff. I absolutely love doing like fight choreography and things like that. Um, so I would like to do that side, but I kind of, I don't know, I flit around and try new things. I think you've got to know every aspect of the film industry to really like get the acting side. I think like if you've worked behind the camera, you can work uh, like better in front of it. So yeah, just, I like, I like doing a bit of everything and, like I don't think you ever stop learning. So, absolutely. Um, and with uh, with some of my favourite actors um, that that turn their hand to directing, like um, Ben Affleck is one of them. Um, he's a better actor because of it, uh, because yeah. of stepping behind the camera. He's a, yeah, I mean, he was, he was great before, but he's much better now as well. So yeah, now that he's well, I mean, and also with the prestige of having a couple of Oscars under your belt, that doesn't count, <laughs> does it? Uh, <laughs> Uh, one, one, one was for writing, I believe. Um, <clears throat> right, so um, Wrongfully Accused is a crime drama. Um, are, um, are there any other genres that you haven't done yet that you'd like to? Lots. Actually, yeah, Laura, go on. You can, you can do it. <laughs> um, yeah, there's loads. I mean, like, I, I've got quite a few coming up that are all different genres, so I'm quite looking forward to them. Um, I don't know really, like, I want to do a car film just because I like Need for Speed, it'd be cool to do a car film, right, like, I want to do that, but, um, I don't know really, I think I just, I'd like to do everything, so, the only one I haven't really got coming up is a horror, so that'd be quite fun, although I don't think I'm already a screamy kind of person, so, I don't know, we'll see how that one goes. It's alright, you can be a final girl. Because um, <laughs> they're the ones that kick butt at the end. Um, yeah. What about yeah. Um, for you, John? Um, probably the same, to be honest. I think I'd rather do the car and the horror type stuff, if I'm honest. Um, I mean, I'm usually cast as, like I've, I've, I've said to, to people before, I'm usually cast as obviously the, the bad guy, the, the gangsters, stuff like that. Um, I mean, I'm in a couple as well that are actually coming up where I'm going to be a gangster or a robber, stuff like that. I mean, obviously, I'm in the new Batman as well, where I actually grab all the Batman and we exchange some lines and different bits. Um, so that, that should be quite fun and quite interesting. But again, I, I'm always seems to be 
stereotyped as that bad role. I don't know why, if it's it's the beard or what, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I'd be quite happy to do anything, to be honest with you. I'd be quite happy to be The Rock and dress up as the fairy and, and do stuff like that. As long as I'm in front of the camera and I'm in this production world, that, that's kind of me happy, to be honest. Um, yeah, um, um, so we, we spoke to uh, Joe Berlinger last year at the premiere of Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile. Um, he's not a fan of the true crime moniker. Uh, what's your take on it? Who's taking this one? <laughs> uh, I'll let you actually answer it, because, uh, yeah, I seem to always take over the interview. Go ahead. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I like crude, uh, crude Crime. True Crime. Yeah. <laughs> Just muddle it up. No, I like I like true crime. I mean, I think I like I do like true films though. I like to learn about different people in their lives and and what's happened to them to get to a point. So I quite like them. I sit, I sit there and I'm like, wait, this is real. Like I get so excited by it. But um, I do like I, I just like a bit of everything really. So I'm kind of I'm pretty easy when it comes to TV and, and film. Yeah, uh, for me, I absolutely love uh, true crime dramas. Um, I love Dharma, I love Gacy, I love pretty much all the serial killers. Um, not, uh, I'm not a massive fan, obviously, of them going around killing people, but I do love reading about them. And obviously, they're different life stories as well. Obviously, the psychological factor, why they've done it, or... Even even the victims' families and stuff, the, what's actually happened afterwards, I love getting them insights, which is why a lot in, obviously, Wrongfully Convicted, um, it kind of focuses on a lot of backstories of how they've become what they are. Um, so if they're in for murder, they're in for robbery, there's always, obviously, a story behind that of why they've become that. So for me, yeah, I absolutely love true crime dramas. Um, but again, I love everything, to be fair. I'll watch pretty much anything that's in front of me. Yeah, it's a, it's a subject matter that we, that, um, as storytellers, um, we've always been fascinated by. Um, what makes these people tick is um, like why we, we always want to like ex explore what's going on. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of explosion there to, to go through. So um, you've worked with a great crop of talent. Do you have a wish list of who you'd like to work with? Obviously, you yourself, John, at the moment, you're working with uh, Robert Pattinson when you get back to mm -hmm. uh, get back to set. Um, so, yeah, do you have like a wish list of people you want to work with? Yeah, um, I'd probably say Margaret Robbie, because I think she's absolutely hilarious. Uh, obviously, the, the Wolf on Wall Street and obviously everyone, uh, Al Harley Quinn. I find her character absolutely amazing in, in pretty much everything she does. Um, but yeah, uh, I suppose obviously as a director and actor, I'd like to work with Tarantino as well. I think he's absolutely fantastic. And then you've got obviously Gil Gadu, who obviously plays Wonder Woman. Um, and again, not only is she extremely pretty, but she is an extremely good actress as well. So I would love to work with her. And then you've got the, the older ones, like I say, like Statham, Arnold Schwarzenegger, different things like that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a bit of a mixture between the, the old actors and the, and the new. I'm a big fan of those. Uh, Margot's great. Um, I've been a fan of Margot's when um, when she was on Neighbours. So I've been a fan of hers for a long time, for a lot longer than a lot longer than when she blew up on in Hollywood. So yeah, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, because yeah. she's always been great. How about you, Laura? Oh man, I have such a massive list of people I want to work like work with. Would be here all day if I spoke about them all. Um, like I've mentioned Matt Bomer about a million times before to people, so um, yeah, him. I'm gonna lose my voice. Um, he, like honestly, like people like Sandra Bullock, Tom Hanks, you know, like the big names. Not because they're names, but I kind of I followed them like as I've been growing up, and it's just like from like a young kid, I've been like I want to work with this person, this person. They've always stayed on the list. Um, I want to work with like Jensen Ackles and I mean, I just want to be on Supernatural. So I mean, that, that goes without saying. So, um, 
there, I have like such a massive list of people I want to work with. Um, yeah, we're going to be here all day. Aaron Paul, Simon Baker, them lot. Yeah, Aaron Paul had to be on the list. Yep. <laughs> He's a great actor. Um, I like him a lot. Um, so um, who inspires you in the industry? Go on, John. Oh, me, oh, okay. uh, For me, it's probably your, your Hitchcocks, your Spielbergs, your Tarantinos, if I'm honest. Um, I like anyone who kind of looks through the, the point of thought rather than the point of view of each actor, so you get that close up on their faces. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Tarantino is pretty much the lot. He's, he's got the blood, he's got the gore, and obviously half of it's obviously fabricated. Someone gets shot, the blow about 12 foot away. But apart from that, it is all seems to be kind of a mixture between the two. Obviously, with Spielberg and, like I said, um, sorry, Hitchcock. Um, in the respect that you get to see what's what's on the character's mind, but you also get to see what they're kind of looking at as well. So in Django, for instance, he's, he's um, sorry, Jamie Foxx is obviously about to shoot Leonardo DiCaprio for cutting the skull open and stuff. And you see the anger, but then you kind of have that quick shot where you see his gun. And he's about to obviously take the shot and stuff. Um, so, yes, I, I love that. I love that the point of view, I love the point of focus on the faces so you can just draw out that raw emotion of each actor. Um, sorry, something just came up on my screen. It kind of distracted me a bit there. But, yeah, um, so that that is me anyway. That's, that's who I like, the, the three favourite directors. Awesome. And you, Laura? Oh, John, you should have spoken a bit longer. I still haven't thought. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, to be honest, people like Charlie Hunnam, like English actors that have made it big out in America, that's kind of cool. Like, um, there, there's a lot of people. I, I like The Rock. You mentioned The Rock. Um, I like him. He's pretty cool. He's a cool guy. Um, I don't know. I, I, I get more inspired by their performance more so than, a, like, specific actors. Like, not I can't think of one actor that's like made every film they've done has been like brilliant, you know what I mean? So it's more on the performance in specific projects more so than actors, if that makes sense. Yeah, it absolutely does. Um, right, so uh, fans are a big part of the industry. Um, who or what are you a fan of? Uh, go on, Laura, I'll let you do it, <laughs> What am I a fan of? White Collar, Need for Speed, The Sinner. I just literally will name every Matt Bomer and Aaron Paul <laughs> uh, series and film. Um, no, I, I don't know. Like, there, there's a lot of... I'm a massive Supernatural fan. I go to, like, the conventions every year. And I, I used to go to meet the actors... Now I've just got like such a good group of friends there. I just kind of go to see them and the actors are a bonus now, which is kind of cool. Um, no, I, I have a lot of, lot of people. I'm like a big fan girl. I kind of like find someone. I'm like, oh my God, I've got to watch everything they've been in. Um, so yeah, there's not really one specific. I just have a broad range of people and shows and things. Have you seen Doom Patrol yet? Matt's no, i yeah. got to watch. Yeah, I'm you kind do. of I'm, I'm still on white collar. I'm like rewatching all of that. I gotta watch the info. I'll have to get on that one. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's great. It's batshit crazy a lot of the time, but it's uh, <laughs> it's a it's a it's a fun watch. It really is. Um, what about you, John? Oh, funny enough, um, the sinner is 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 actually what I'm watching quite a bit of at the minute. Thanks to Laura getting his uh, hooked on it. Um, so yes, I've I watched the cinema, I've watched White Collar. Um, recently we started watching Bedlam, which is uh, based on an old asylum in a hotel. Um, that's that's quite good. There's Sons of Anarchy. I think Sons of Anarchy is is, is written absolutely amazing. Um, obviously you've got Charlie Hummel as as well. Uh, who's a fantastic actor. Um, so yeah, but I, I have such a again such a, a range of programs and films I love to watch. Um, so it literally does, it goes from that horror to that funny to, I say, Sons of Anarchy, where you, you've got that bike uh, MC and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so that, that's pretty much it really for me. Right. Um, and so um, 
is there a book that you're a fan of that hasn't been adapted to film or TV or Netflix yet that you'd love to be a part of? Yeah, um, I would say The Stand by Stephen King. It's basically, well, it, it's based on the world ending um, and you kind of get to see it again, everybody's emotions, how they suddenly turn from really nice people to the, to the most evil people. Um, and I think that would make an amazing either TV series or film itself. Um, but yeah, it's, it's literally called The Stand. I think apart from that, everything else I, I've always read is, is kind of become a, a big thing. So like Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, various different bits. I've got to admit, I prefer the books to some of the films I've actually seen or obviously the TV series that I've seen. Um, but apart from that, yeah, that's, that's pretty much, yeah, everything I've probably read is, is always become a, a film, which is crazy. Apart from The Stand, like I say, by Stephen, uh, Stephen King, sorry. I've got Steven Spielberg on the brain there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that, well, yeah, that, that's me anyway. <laughs> Do you, Laura? Um, I, I read these books. It's like, uh, I think there's six books. Um, and it's, the first one's called Shatter Me, and there's Unite Me, like each book's um, got, like, obviously, it's like a continuum, continuum, that's not even a word, it's another bit of the story. Um, I did hear that they were going to make it into a, a series, so I'm really hoping they do, because I literally am so hooked on these books, like, I can't put them down, I sit there and it's like 3am and I'm like, nah, just read another page and see what happens, so... All right, cool. All right, so um, with the popularity of streaming services like Netflix or Disney Plus, what do you think the future of cinema is? Um, well, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, I'm hoping cinema never disappears. Um, I've said it, I've probably said it God knows how many times in my life, but as a kid, I used to love going to the cinema, uh, watching stuff like Turtles, Never Ending Story. And, it wasn't really what was on the screen, it was more what was around me. Obviously the people laughing, the smell of the popcorn, um, and kind of everybody's take on that program that I was watching. Obviously I might not have found someone funny, but someone next to me was. And it's, it's just like a whole group of obviously people rather than sitting at, at home watching Netflix and just being able to pause it with your, your friends or your family. Um, so I'm kind of hoping cinema never actually disappears. I mean, I know at the moment, I'm obviously, I just wrote this TV series, so it's, it's pilots getting aired at the Audion, and I'm hoping it's going to have a big turn up for that exact reason. Um, but yeah, definitely hoping that obviously Netflix uh, doesn't kill off the, the cinema industry. And I, I think there will always be uh, some sort of the cinema experience. Um, I mean, drive throughs are, drive-ins are happening again, not drive throughs that's take words. Uh, drive-ins are happening uh, more, and there's one actually, there's a premiere happening next week, actually. Um, where it, in Brent Cross, they're doing a drive-in for it, so it's for a British film called Break, so that's going to be fun. What about you, Laura? Yeah, I'm kind of similar. Like, I think, I think streaming services are... I mean, I like them. I watch a lot on, on the streaming services. But like John said, you can't meet, you can't beat going to the cinema and having that, that smell of popcorn and hearing like the fizzy machine and everyone having like the bars and you get the ice cream stand. I mean, it's mainly about food for me. Let's just face it. But <laughs> like, <laughs> like you just you can't beat that buzz of meeting your friends at the door and then going in and you get your tickets and you get everything. You go and watch a film and you might not be talking to like your friend, but you're sitting there or spending time with them. And it's just, I don't think you can beat that. And I, I hope that we never lose that. Um, as great as the streaming services are, and like I say, I mean, I watch a lot on, on them. You can't be going to the cinema and just having that, like everybody coming together for the enjoyment of a film, you know? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, it's, it's the community aspect to it that mm. will never, will never die as far as, as far as I'm concerned, will never go away. Um, so with, with this lockdown um, and things starting to reopen again, um, have you been using the time to keep yourself creative or taking it easy? Yeah, I mean, for me, I've been doing a lot of writing, um, different 
obviously I wrote seven episodes for for this season. Uh, yeah, for this series. Um, but I'm also writing a 17th century drama as well, which is is based on prison life and stuff. Um, but then at the in the background, I've been doing a lot as well. So I've been doing interviews, uh, finding different set locations, and obviously now I'm back to tattooing as well. So I, I, I own a tattoo studio. Um, so as of today, I'm back to doing that. So for my life, it has literally been manic. And now I'm kind of back to something I'm enjoying. But then obviously on the 2nd of August, when we start in production again, I'm into something I'm really enjoying. Mm. So, uh, so yeah, I can't wait. Obviously, I'm glad lockdown's pretty much over now. It's just a shame, obviously, we're having to wear the masks and everything. But obviously, it's health comes first. Uh, with the tattoo studio, what sort of precautions are you having to put in place? Yeah, um, it's a uh, screen up, wearing aprons, uh, the masks, face visors, obviously the hand sanitizer. But every customer that comes in is, has to wear the mask. Um, we've got a hand sanitizer next to the door. They've got to obviously wash their hands and stuff. So every single health and safety thing we can cover really is, is, is in place. Right, okay. So, right. Yeah, because, um, you know, I mean, I don't know how big your studio is. Um, my brother has a studio up in up in Edinburgh, um, and uh, yeah, it, it's it's got to be difficult to. I mean, it, I suppose it, it might not be as difficult um, like as like a, a hair salon, for example, where they've got like chairs like next to each other. Because um, yeah. I think you, know, you have like kind of in a room, aren't you, uh, for tattoos? Yeah, I mean. And so we still keep, obviously, there's at least a three metre gap between each client. Um, and then obviously we're sitting at that two, two metre mark. Um, so, yeah, so as long as you've got a decent sized studio, which I'm fortunate now to actually have a, a two story studio. Um, so we have that space where we can, we can kind of do that. But there is obviously a lot of smaller studios as well that are going to struggle or they're going to I I have to make space, I guess. Yeah. What about you, Laura? Um, I, I, yeah, I've been pretty creative. I, like, we, we've been decorating our house over, over lockdown, so it's not really creative, like, film industry, but I've been doing a lot of painting, and my dad stuck up my wallpaper, which is kind of cool. Um, like, I've, I've just been working behind the scenes on, on other projects that I'm working on as well. Um, just kind of keeping busy I'm not one of these people that can just sit there all day I get so like I gotta get up I gotta do something I gotta move around so um yeah I've just been keeping as busy as, as I can really cool um and, and going back to wrongfully accused what what are you hoping for the series um we're hoping it, it's kind of going to be as big as obviously the, your prison breaks you went with stuff like that um, I'm hoping, obviously, it hooks that many people in. It, it runs for years, um, and obviously educates the public as well. Obviously, what true crime really is, what prison life is really like, and um, yeah, like I said, hopefully, it'll bring enjoyment to people. So the the first season series is uh, it's seven episodes. So you've got all those written, and you found your locations, and everything for it. Yep, have indeed. Um, well, for the pilot, definitely. Um, oh, yep, yeah. uh, the pilot's definitely all the locations, all the actors are more or less found now. Um, just signed a kind of a celebrity gangster, uh, Dave Courtney, so I've just signed him up to it as well to play an older man part. Um, but yeah, everything is there, is, is set in motion. Um, and obviously Laura's character again is, is going to be set to, to open up in the next episode a lot more. Um, so yeah, should definitely be seeing a lot more of everybody, really. Cool. Okay. You, uh, and what are you hoping for, Laura? I mean, like, you always want a project to really take off, don't you? I mean, you don't want to put all the work in and it just to, to fail. So, you know, obviously I, I want it to go as, as big as John wants to take it and I'll keep, working and, and helping out and you know acting as long as, as he wants me on set and I think it's just you know you've got to, you've got to put the work in to get the reward so I mean John's working non-stop you know whenever I talk to him he's, he's working so you know I think that personally from what I've read and everything like that like 
it's going to be a good show. Just put it that way. Like it's going to be good. Awesome. Looking forward to it. So just before I let you go, what are you looking forward to getting back to once we're able to? No, Molly, you definitely. <laughs> but no, I am dying to get back on set. Uh, I think my next next production is the 25th of July, um, which I'm down to Liverpool for. But I am absolutely itching and dying to get back on set and start either consulting, acting, or obviously directing my own. I just can't wait. Are you allowed to say what you're working on on the 25th? Because that's just next week. Yeah, 25th is actually the Batman one that I'm actually going back to doing. Um, which is down in Liverpool, and then it's up at the Isle of Skye, I do believe. Um, so I can tell you that part, I just can't obviously tell you. So oh, I yeah, end up no. doing most of the story, so... Yeah, I wouldn't even ask. Um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing that film when it comes out. I, I do think that Robin Pat Robert Pattinson is going to be a good Batman. Um, like, and, like, um, I, I mean, I, I, I know a lot of people are, are, are thinking of him as just the Twilight Kid, but he's so much more than that. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's Harry Potter as well, isn't there? It's, uh... So you say again? I'm saying he was in Harry Potter as well. I guess he was. He was in, um, I in, think, um, was it the he, fourth he was better one? in that, I yeah, yeah. yeah, he was a much better actor in that. Yeah. Um, he's, um, if you haven't seen it, I'd recommend it because he's very, he, he's unrecognisable, but he's great. And that's in the Lost City of Z. Uh, he's brilliant yeah. in that film. He's yeah. brilliant in that film and he's unrecognisable with that beard, but he's brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen The Rover, but apparently he's really good in that too. So, um, yeah. What about you, Laura? Um... I'm looking forward to, you know, same as John, getting back on set. You can't beat the set, Phil. Um, but also, I do a lot of, like, self-defense stuff. And obviously, I've not been able to do it for, like, four months now. So I'm like, I just, I want to go punch someone. I'll be honest. That's where I'm at at <laughs> the moment. My boxing bag is getting a, <laughs> getting a bit worn at the moment. So I need to get back to, to training. Awesome. Okay. All right, well, I'll leave it there. Um, thank you so much for joining me again um, this, uh, for take two of the interview. Um, <laughs> curse you, Zoom. Um, but there we go. Uh, but thank you and all the best for everything. And, uh, yeah, look forward to everything you come up, you, you do. So, yeah. Oh, you too. It's been fantastic. Thanks yeah, very thanks much. Take, no thanks. worries. No. Take care. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. I'm here on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.